Oh, hello, this is Gurumurthy Ramachandran, and this video is to show you how to use Argo, a software that performs Monte Carlo simulations. The first thing you need to do is to go to this website, uh, boozallen.github.io slash Argo. <clears throat> and when you do that, you will come to this website. So that's the website, boozallen.github.io.argo. And you will see the screen. And this is a free Monte Carlo simulation software. Um, <clears throat> and there are tabs at the top, top about different features, and how to download, download and contact. But if you go down, scroll down to the bottom of this page, you will see this tab I would get Argo V4. And if you click on that, uh, at least in my computer, it takes me to my uh, email. Um, and you can just send this email directly to getargo at bah.com. And uh, in the subject line, you type in Argo license request. And uh, you just send it off. And you, within a few minutes, uh, you get um, an email back with the link for downloading the software. And once you have that, you can uh, read this Argo installation guide and follow the instructions very carefully. You download the Argo software, and it is now, and it is then uh, included as an add-in to Excel on your Microsoft Office. And then the next time you open Excel, you'll see at the top here, Argo is already installed. So as I said before, this is an add-in to Excel. And I'm not going through all the steps about how you do an add-in, but if you follow the instructions in the Argo installation guide, you should be fine. Um, so once you have installed Argo, you click on this tab, the Argo tab here, and you get all these different options within Argo that are available to you. So what I'm going to do now is illustrate the use of Argo using a very simple model. And the model I'm going to use is the concentration is equal to C equal to G, the generation rate, divided by Q, the ventilation rate. So it's just a one parameter divided by another parameter. And so what I'm going to do now is here are the three parameters. G and Q are the input parameters to the model. And the output is the C, the concentration. And so <clears throat> if I were to do just a, a assign point values to G and Q, so I assign 1,000 to G, and 25 to Q, and then the concentration is essentially G, A4 divided by E4. And so that turns out to be 40. But now what I'm going to do is, rather than have a point estimate, I'm going to describe this variable G with a distribution. So I click on this tab, and you see several different options. And each one has even further options. So the Popular, these are the most frequently used continuous and discrete distributions. Uh, so it has the normal, the log normal, the triangular, uh, the Bernoulli, which we'll not encounter in this course, uh, the uniform, and the uniform discrete. And in fact, these cover the distributions that we will be most using in this course. But if you're adventurous, you can also try these other distributions, the beta distribution, exponential, gamma, logistic, and so on and so forth. Uh, there are also discrete distributions, uh, the Bernoulli, uniform discrete, geometric, hypergeometric, Poisson, and so on. Um, so we'll not be particularly adventurous today. So I'm going to describe my variable G as a log, as a normal distribution. And once I click on that normal, I can now uh, open up another window in which I can specify 
the parameters of the normal distribution. So normal distribution is described by the mean and standard deviation. So I will say that the mean is 1,000 and the standard deviation is 100. And so that's, that's mean, the standard deviation is 100, and I apply that. Similarly, now I go to Q, again, click on distribution, click on the popular distribution, and I say that Q is described by a uniform distribution. Uniform distribution is two parameters, the minimum and maximum. So I'll say that the minimum is 5, and the maximum is 45. So um, the <clears throat> midpoint is 25, 25 minus 20, 25 plus 20 on, on either on the low and the high side. And we click on the apply button. Sees the output, and so we call that the result in this software. So we'll say that we we'll just call that add result. So now we'll say that C is also described, the output will be a distribution of values. Um, and then I click on the options. And here there are several different options available to you for how you want to do this random sampling. And even though the technique we are using is called Monte Carlo simulations, there are a couple of variations within it. Uh, the first one is called Latin hypercube sampling. And the second option is the Monte Carlo sampling. And um, for today's exercise, today's demonstration, we'll just stick with the Latin hypercube sampling, which actually produces um, better, uh, more random results uh, of sampling than the actual Monte Carlo sampling, uh, for even for small, <clears throat> relatively small simulation sizes of 1,000. So I'm going to say, OK, we need to do 1,000 samples. Um, and uh, then I just click on Simulate. And the simulation is complete. <coughs> I click the OK button. And then we can do the analysis. So you can say, OK, I'm going to. Uh, so there are um, the A4 and B4 refer to the cells in which the G and the Q variables are located. And C4 here, the results, refers to the output, the concentration. So I want to look at um, both the inputs and the outputs. And so when I do that, um, let's start with A4. So the cell A4 here, uh, this is course, we have defined it as a normal distribution, and the results of the Monte Carlo sampling from this normal distribution give you this, uh, produce this frequency diagram, this frequency chart. Similarly, the cell B4 is the variable Q, this, which we have described as a uniform distribution, and when we sample from a uniform distribution a thousand times, Here's the distribution of the 1,000 values of the ventilation rate. And this is the uh, output variable C. And uh, these are the 1,000 values described as a frequency chart, uh, a histogram. And, uh, and as you can see, this is very uh, similar. It looks very skewed, and it looks very similar to a log normal skew distribution. I'm going to close these windows. And now we'll look at another uh, button called the sensitivity. And when you click on that, um, there are a couple of figures that uh, pop up. Um, and uh, what is shown here in the spider chart and the tornado chart are two different ways of visualizing the same thing. Um, <clears throat> so if you look at the red line here, uh, this is 
uh, actually let's look at the blue line first which is that so that is for the variable a4 which is the generation rate and so as we go from the um, generation rate of 932 to 1067 so that's from the 25th to the 75th percentile the output goes from 37 to 42. So uh, compared to, if you look at the variable B4, which is the ventilation rate, as you go from the 25th percentile, which is 15, to the 75th percentile, which is 35, um, the output varies from 66.67 to 28.57. So, so as you can see visually, there is a much larger variation um, <clears throat> in the output because of the variation in Q rather than um, the variable G. You can see the same thing here uh, in the tornado chart where on the top you see this um, variation from 37.3 to 42.7 when, so that's the 37.3 to 42.7 on the um, chart at the bottom. Um, as the input varies from the 25th to the 75th percentile of its variation. Um, so relatively small variation. And in fact, the chart at the bottom tells you that the variation is only 5.4. Whereas um, if the variation in the other uh, second variable Q goes from the 25th to the 75th percentile, that is from 15 to 35. The variation in C goes from 28.57 to 66.67. So what this is telling us is that the output C is much more sensitive to variation in the ventilation rate rather than variation in the generation rate. Um, and more of the variation in the output is caused by variation and uncertainty in the ventilation rate. So if we need to uh, reduce the uncertainty in the output, we are probably better off uh, reducing the uncertainty in Q rather than the uncertainty in G. Okay, moving on to the next button. So if you go to the embed charts, um, so these are the charts that you can use as outputs uh, for your reports and your homework and your projects and so on. So what I'm going to do is, as a default, let's click on all of these. Um, and uh, and so what this is telling us, so a whole bunch of charts open up. So the first two are um, on this on the right hand side you see C4. This is the frequency distribution. This is the log normal distribution that I talked about. And the next one is the cumulative probability distribution, the cumulative of the log normal for the output. Um, we can then see a similar thing for B4. That's the frequency distribution of the uniform distribution. Here's the cumulative um, probability distribution of the uniform distribution. And, and we see the same thing here um, for A4, which is the normal distribution for generation rate and the cumulative normal distribution um, for the uh, generation rate. Um, and then you can uh, either just directly cut and paste these figures onto your report uh, for your homework or your project or whatever else you might be using this for. Uh, or you can also use the extract um, so you can export the simulation data to an external data file. So I'm going to delete these charts for now.
Um, and in this chart, actually, you can also see the values that were used for creating the cumulative uh, CDF or the cumulative distribution function and the probability distribution function. Um, so for A4, B4, and C4. Uh, one other thing that you can do is if you are interested in retrieving all 1,000 values of your simulation, um, there is an Argo function called op. And uh, so what I'll do is op, OP, and then that's the uh, output uh, distribution that we are interested in. Control shift enter. So you highlight however many cells you want. Um, so in this case, I went from cell, uh, I mean, row four to row 20, so 16 cells. And I plugged in my formula op C4 and I pressed control shift enter. And so I get um, 16 values of the output of the. Um, distribution, but obviously I'm just showing it for the sake of visibility, but you can get all 1,000 values of the simulation in this way. You just have to go through 1,000 rows. And you can use those rows, or you can use that column of values to calculate all the statistics of that distribution. You can calculate uh, the mean, the median, uh, the mode, uh, the 95th percentile and so on. So this is, uh, uh, again, to summarize, a very uh, easy to use software for carrying out Monte Carlo simulations. And the best thing is that it's free. Um, and with that, I'm gonna stop and